Open up your Bibles. I want you to go to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. It's so good to see you in 2017. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning of verse 1. I'm going to read a little bit. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Before I continue on there, you know that, that one statement that Jezebel did, she made a statement against the man of God. That's a dangerous thing to speak against someone anointed by heaven. It's a dangerous thing to speak against something that God is doing, amen? It's, it's so dangerous. There's this great, great man of God in Africa that the Lord had said, I want you to go into the United States. And, and he came to the state of Texas and he bought property in the midst of a, just a bunch of farmland. He bought, he bought a, a, over a thousand acres and he was planning on doing something great for God in that land. And, and so uh, one of the politicians, the local politicians, did not want a man from Africa to build something for God in the United States of America in his area in Texas. He was a racist man. And so he told the, the, he told the man, he said, you will get the permits to construct over my dead body. The next day he died. There's power and there's authority in the name of Jesus. And, and if you get in the way of what God is going to do, God will remove you. Amen. And so don't be, don't, don't be dis, disheartened when people threaten you. Or things come against you. There's power and authority in the name of Jesus. And there's an anointing upon your life. And I just speak that prophetically over your life. That every blockage will be removed in Jesus' mighty name. Not by power, nor by might, but by the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. May the angels of the Lord go before you. Amen. Verse 3. And Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah. And he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough. Lord, he said, take my life, for I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. He looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel Lord came again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. There he came to a cave where he spent the night, but the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your, pre your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. 
I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. Then the Lord told them, go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazel to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, to, the, to be king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from the town of Abba Mahola, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hezel will be killed by Jehu. And those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Yet I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to bow or kissed him. Praise the Lord for his word. I want to share a word with you and just remind you and encourage you today that God knows. And I want you to know that he knows. We all face situations and circumstances. We all go through trials and tribulations. There's times that we feel like we're the only one and the only person that is dealing with the situation or the things that we're facing is so difficult and that we're going to be crushed by it. We feel like we're lost and we've been for, forgotten. But I want to encourage you today. God knows. Know that he knows. And if you can know that he knows and you can encourage yourself that he knows what you're going through. He knows the struggles that you're facing. He knows the situation you're going through. As you understand that he knows, not only you will have a peace that he knows, but you will have an expectation that God is working something out. He's working something out. He has a plan for the, the process that you're going through. He has a, a, a purpose for the season that you, are, that you are in. He has a reason why you might be in this area. If you've been fully following God and trusting in Him, even when it seems like you're all by yourself, I want to encourage you. God is still with you. He has not forsaken you. Know that He knows that He knows what you're going through. Amen. Just know that God knows. He knows. And the Bible says that the righteous are never forsaken. You are not forsaken. Help is on its way. When Elisha was facing a, play, a time where, where everyone was, was trying to kill him, he had just seen the greatest victory. But because of one little negative word of death, he thought, man, Fear came upon him. He ran for his life. But even though he was running for his life and he was running away from, from what he was supposed to be doing, God was still there. You might feel like you're alone in the wilderness. You might be tired and weary. And Elisha, he was tired and weary. But God sent an angel and fed him in the middle of the desert and gave him strength. Every time you follow God and every time you are going through your season and you feel like you've been drained and you feel like there's no more strength in you, God will send forth angels to give you strength. There are ministering angels that will encourage you, ministering angels that will feed you. That ministering angel might be an actual angelic person or it might be just a brother and sister in Christ who, who God gave a word of encouragement for you. But I want you to know that God knows. And he has not forgotten you. He has not walked away from you. But he has a plan and purpose for your life. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God knows. You might be going through a very dark time in your life, but God knows. You might feel like everything's against you. God knows. And so if you know that he knows, you can take peace in that. You're not by yourself. Even when you feel like you're by yourself, you're not by yourself. God is with you. When the, when the prophet was surrounded by an army ready to, to destroy him, they came to seek him out because he was speaking the secrets of their king and they were losing in battles. And so they surrounded him with an army. And the prophet's uh, servant rose up and he saw the army that surrounded the city. And he was so fearful because that army came for them. He went to the man of God. He said, he said they're around us. The army is here. They're here to take us. The prophet looked at him and said, there's more for us than against us. Then he prayed, Lord, open up his eyes. And, and his eyes were open. He saw the army of the Lord surrounding the army that was getting ready to attack him. 
you got spiritual backup. You got spiritual backup. When you walk with God, even if you're facing a, a very difficult season, di difficult fight, you're not going to go into that fight by yourself. God will jump in with you. I remember when I was, a, when I was in junior high, there was this, this bully in the school, and, and he told me, he said, after school, we're going to fight. I didn't know what to do. That's the big bully. He wanted to fight me. Started getting scared. I'm like, man, 3.30, we're supposed to fight. 3.30, I mean, you see that clock just, and it, it seems like it goes faster. But then I had another friend that said, hey, you're going to get in a fight? Need a skina? He's <laughs> like, yeah. And so he backed me. He was there to back me up. I want to tell you, Jesus is your skina. He will back you up. He'll make sure that you won't fall. He'll make sure that you don't get hurt. He'll make sure that he'll take care of you. For those that don't know what skin is, Google it. God has a plan. We might not be able to see it, but he is working it out for your good. In Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. And now I always ask myself, am I here because of myself or am I here because I'm following God? Do I love God? Am I called to his purposes? So if I love God and I'm called to his purposes, I, I match the criteria for this scripture. And so that, that I could say, and I know that God is working this out for my good. You might be getting an eviction notice. They're going to kick you out of your house. And you could say, I know that God is working this out for my good. You might be threatened to be fired. I know that God is working this out for my good. You might be going through a struggle in your body. I know that God is working this out for my good. Because his word says all things. He works all things. The good and the bad. God has a way of turning it around and making it into a blessing. Even when, when you think the, the, the unthinkable happens, when you see over the course of time how God took that negative situation and turned it around into a blessing, you can stand and say, Lord, you are faithful to your word. And you say all things work together for good. It's working together. Amen? Amen. When my father passed away, most difficult time in our lives, Church didn't know what to do. People didn't know what to do. Family didn't know what to do. Here's the great man of God, gone. Can you imagine the, the, the pain and the struggle that, that I, I was going through personally? I don't want to lose my father. But I guarantee you this, I would not be the man of God I am today if I did not go through that season. I never was able to preach the gospel and be a man full of the Holy Spirit while my father was alive. I didn't get to those depths, but when my father was gradu graduated to heaven, God graduated me to stand in the position so that I could declare the word of the Lord. And so where it ended with him, it begun with me. And even though, I, I, even though of course, we don't want our, our loved ones to pass away, of course, you know, I didn't want to lose my father, but I've seen that it's worked together for good, for, my, for not just my life, but for your life. I'm here preaching the gospel because of that situation. And so even though it's a negative thing, God knows how to turn it around and make it for good. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. It's going to turn around if we hold on to our faith. It will turn around if you hold on to your faith. When you go through the trial, when you go through the struggle, when you go through the situation, you cannot let go of your faith. You have to grab hold of the shield of faith and hold on to your faith. The Bible says you will quench every fiery dart of the devil. Your faith will see you through. The Bible says that he'll give you beauty for ashes. He'll give you joy for mourning. 
there is restoration for brokenness. When you hold on to your faith, God will turn it around and make it a blessing. But you cannot let go of your faith. You have to begin to take that stand. I'm going to trust God in this situation. I've already done everything I could do, I could do in the physical. I've already, I've already done everything. I've tried to talk to people. I try to make a way for myself. I try to make these, the right decision. But now I'm at the place where I cannot do anything. I'm just going to trust God and see his goodness in my life. That God knows what I'm going through. And he will feed me even in the mi middle of the desert. I know that he knows that what I'm going through. I know he knows that I'm hurt. I know that he knows that I feel abandoned. I know that he knows that, that of where, where my past was. I know that he knows. So I'm going to trust him. Because the same God that brought me out of those things yesterday is the same God that will take me into my tomorrow. Amen. You have to know that he knows. Amen. Matthew. 11, verse 28, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. You cannot carry your problems. You cannot carry your stresses. You cannot carry your sorrows. You cannot deal with the situations that you're going through today, and you will definitely not be able to deal with the situations that you're going to go through tomorrow. Because they're not just physical, they're spiritual. And until you realize that you're not battling against something, uh, that you're not battling against flesh and blood, but you're battling against principalities and powers of darkness, that you, this is not meant for you to win. This is meant for you to be defeated. But when you learn to fight the good fight of faith and know who you are in Christ Jesus and know that your God is a deliverer, that your God is with you, that your God will not see you fail, that God will be with you, and when you surrender completely to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I, I, I'm tired of trying to build my life. I'm, ti I'm tired of, of trying to fix myself. I'm tired of just living for myself. And I just cast this care upon you, Lord Jesus, because you care for me. I surrender to you, Lord Jesus. You are the only reason why I should live. I mean, you can only live for the things of this world so long. Someone says, I'm living, I, I want to be rich, but then you get rich and you realize it's not enough. I want to have a family, and then you get a family and you realize it's not enough. I want to be, I want to be famous, and, you, and you, you gain some sort of popularity and you realize it's not enough. The only thing willing, the only thing worth living for is Jesus Christ. And so he says, Come. Come to me. Are you tired? Come. Are you broken? Come. Are you ready to give up? Awesome. Come. Let me have your worries. Let me have your stress. Let me tell you this. Jesus' hands are open. And he says, give it to me. Give me that fear. Give me that stress. Give me that word. Give me that unanswered prayer. Give it to me. You can't carry it long enough. I heard this This. Well, there's, there's a place in, in uh, and you, we've seen it on, on pictures and we've seen it on, on posters where it shows a really strong man and, and he has the world, you know, it's, he, I guess he's like some sort of superhero and he, he has the world on his shoulders, but the, it looks like the world is crushing him. And that's the way it is with all of us. You're carrying too much. Don't you want to live a life without depression? without stress, without worry and fear. Jesus says, come on, give it to me. Come on. He wants it. Come to me. Give it to me. And he says, my yoke is light. Isaiah, I'm going to add to the scriptures. 
I'm going to add to the, to the word. Isaiah 53. I'm not going to charge you extra. Isaiah 53. Beginning in verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him like a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. He paid the price for every stress, every fear, every worry. He already paid the price at the cross. So he says, come, give it to me. Give it to me. Surrender to me. And as you surrender to God, he will lift that weight off of your shoulder. He'll bring peace and deliverance to your life. And you'll begin to run again in freedom. You begin to walk again, knowing that you have a deliverer, knowing that you have a savior, knowing that you, are, you have a God that knows, that he knows, that he knows what you're going through. And he, you're not forsaken. Hallelujah. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Tell your neighbor, nothing can separate you from God's love. But pastor, I've been very bad. Nothing can separate you from God's love. For you, for you to say that you were very bad is to say that, that Jesus' blood is not worthy enough to pay for your sin. But his blood was more worthy to pay for all the sins of all mankind. And so he freely gives it to you. He says, he went to the cross. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he went to the cross. He went to the cross for you. And so he says, come on. Give me your yoke. Give me your, give me your pain. Give me, give me that stress in your life. Because when you think that you're running away from God, when you think that you're, 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 you're finally running away and, and that you're hiding, you're really not hiding because he ain't going to let you leave. He's going to be there with you. He's going to follow you. He's going to chase after you. Because nothing can separate you from his love. He loves you. You've been bought with the price, the blood of Jesus Christ. Give it to him. Come on. Don't let another year. Don't, don't live another year with that stress. Don't live another year with that worry. Pastor, you don't understand. I, I can't make my marriage work. I don't live another year with that stress. I don't know what to do about my finances. Don't live another year with that stress. I don't know what to do. My purpose and, my, and, and, and the destiny of my life, don't live another year trying to answer that question. Don't you know that God knows how to restore your marriage? Don't you know that God knows how to provide for your needs? Don't you know that God has a plan and purpose for your life? He says, just give up. Come on, come on, come to me. If you're weary, come to me. If you're stressed, come to me. If you have burdens, come to me. Give it to me. He carry it. He carry it. I don't know, how, I, I don't know what, what it's like to live like the rest of the world. Because I don't allow that stuff to come upon me. As soon as that, that, that stuff tries to come in my life, I, I give it right to God. I give him all the worries. I give him all the stress. I give him all the fears. I give it all to him. I've learned to be free. He said, give it to me. I'm giving it to you. It's so much easier to wake up and say, Lord, I'm serving you. Someone says, well, Pastor, what are you going to do about that problem? That's not my problem. That's his. 
and his blood will take care of it. Amen? Hallelujah. Close your eyes for a moment. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to not only die for the sins of mankind, but to give us eternal life, an abundant life, a good life, a life that overflows. Father, there are people here that have never surrendered their life to you. They do not know you, Lord Jesus. They've been dealing with so much stress, so much fear, so much lack and want. But Lord, I believe that the word of God has been spoken and they want to surrender today. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you touch their heart, that you minister to them, that even this moment, that deliverance is taking place and salvation has come to their homes. I thank you. I thank you. If you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and cast that care upon him, or maybe you have given your life to God, but you just need to be set free in one area or another and surrender that burden, surrender that weight, surrender that stress, that fear to the God. When I count to three, I want you to lift up your right hand. We're going to pray together. And we're going to pray a prayer of salvation and deliverance, a prayer of freedom in the name of Jesus, and just surrender to God. This is the day of salvation. This is a day make your life right, to get, get your life right with God. Do not live another day for yourself. All that leads to stress and death, but living for Jesus, Jesus says he'll give you abundant life. If that's you, you want to surrender to God, you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive your sins or rededicate your life or just commit yourself to God. If that's you, on the count of three, lift up your right hand. One, two, three, lift it up wherever you're at. Hallelujah. All over the church. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord sees you. The Lord sees you. The Lord sees you. Hallelujah. Keep your hand lifted up. This is between you and God. Hallelujah. Now say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come inside my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. And I ask you to come and live inside of me. I dedicate my life to you. To, to serve you. And to follow you all the days of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me your word. I will follow your word. I will follow your spirit. And I'll be changed into your image. I cast all my cares upon you. I, I release them right now. Every stress, every worry every fear I give it to you Jesus and I thank you Lord that you know and that you are receiving it and setting me free I thank you that I am free in Jesus mighty name and I have victory in the name of the Lord thank you Jesus in Jesus name amen 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, I'm stress-free. We are in a church that has no problems, no worries, complete strength, complete freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. Victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you have sensed the, sensed the presence of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Did y'all receive? Did y'all receive? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. See, God is doing this. God is a good God. But see, we cannot live our life like he's not there. That's why we just have to recognize him. You know, I, I practice the presence of God. There was this, 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 uh, this uh, monk who used to be a soldier, and he had done a lot of warfare. And so after, you know, the battles, he, he just felt like he needed to do something for God. He had, he had done so much in the war that it, just the guilt and the shame. So he committed himself to being a monk. And so he went to the, the convent, and they gave him the task. They said, okay, you're here to serve God now. So your job is to wash dishes. Now you take a man who used to be a soldier and command armies, and now his job is to wash dishes. That, that was what he did. So he'd wash dishes, and he hated it. He hated washing dishes, and, and every day he'd go in there, man, these monks, they, you know, I, I could 
take them all out, you know, and just washing the dishes, you know, that's what they want me to do, wash dishes. But then he began to say, you know what, I'm not here because of myself, I'm here because of God. So then he began to practice the presence of God. And so he made it his worship when he would wash dishes. He just began to worship God. And he began to, to, to imagine that God was there with him. And he just began to worship, Lord, I thank you. I worship you. And the presence of God will fill that kitchen. It became so glorious that people would come from all over the world just to be in the kitchen while he was washing dishes. Even the Pope went in just to sit in the kitchen to watch, watch him wash dishes. People of God. God will be there with you. When I learned that you could practice the presence of God, I woke up the next day. I was driving to work, and I started imagining that Jesus was sitting right in the passenger seat. I just had a good conversation, amen. I made sure to keep my eyes on the road, though. Amen. When, when, I, was, when I was walking into a, a, a prison to go preach, I began to practice the presence. As I was going through the bars, through the, through the doors, even though I, there was such a spirit of fear and, and anxiety there, but then I remind myself, I'm not by myself. Jesus is here. And I just started imagining myself holding the hand of Jesus into that dark place. And I'm telling you, we have a revival. Amen? Amen. And so know that you know that you're not by yourself, that he's there with you. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah.